The MC6821 is a typical input-output chip designed by Motorola to operate with the 6800 family of MPUs. This IC may be found operating with the 6800 8-bit computer or with the 68000 16-bit computer. The 6821 is a peripheral interface adapter, or PIA for short, which is constructed using NMOS technology. Data bus lines D0 through D7 allow the microprocessing unit to write data to or read data from the 6821 as if it were a memory location. Pins PA0 to PA7 and PB0 to PB7 are used to interface all the peripheral devices except for the video display. The video display has its own I.O. device. The IC itself is addressed with three bits. These are the chip select pins CS0, CS1, and CS2. When the IC is selected, inputs chip select 0 and chip select 1 are brought high, while input control pin chip select 2 is held low. The inputs labeled RS0 and RS1 are the two address lines used for internal registers within the IC. Through the use of the three chip select inputs and the two register select inputs, one of four locations in the PIA can be accessed. The PIA is typically in a high impedance state until it is addressed. When data is being transferred within the PIA, the enable input pin is brought high. The enable input is controlled by the MPU. Pin 21 is the read-write control input. This signal is generated by the MPU and is used to control the direction of the data flow on the data bus lines. When the read-write line is low, the data is transferred from the MPU to the PIA address. And when the read-write line is made high, it sets up the PIA for transferring data from the PIA to the MPU. It was mentioned earlier that the PIA has two 8-bit input-output registers. These were labeled PA0 to PA7 and PB0 to PB7. Inside the PIA, these input-outputs connect to four addressable registers. As you can see, there are two identical strings of registers, and each string connects to the data bus line registers. The peripheral data register and the data direction register are connected internally bit by bit. Since these registers work together, they are considered as being one location on the IC. Therefore, both are assigned one address. As you can see, one set is addressed FF00 and the other set is addressed FF03. The data direction register performs one primary function. It decides if the peripheral data register is to input information or output information. This is ultimately controlled through bit 2 of the control register. If the control register receives a high at bit 2, then the peripheral data register is made an output. If, on the other hand, the control register receives a low at bit 2, then the peripheral data register is made an input. Here is a simple example of how these registers work. In our example, we will use peripheral port A. Keep in mind that port B works the same way. When the processor first turns on, bit 2 in the control register will be low. The processor then writes to the data direction register and gives the input or output assignments. Once this is done, the processor will force bit 2 in the control register high. This allows the instructions contained in the peripheral data register to output to the peripheral device. Pins CA1 and CA2 are two more of the control pins used on this IC. They work together to perform what is known as a handshake. Here is an example of how the handshake works. The handshake begins when the peripheral device places a high on pin CA1 of the PIA. This information is then transferred through the data bus to the MPU. Basically, the peripheral device is informing the processor unit that it has some data to send to it for further processing. The processor acknowledges the peripheral's request and sends a high signal through the data bus to the PIA, then through pin CA2 to the peripheral device 
to tell it that it is ready to receive the data. Next, the peripheral device sends the data through the PIA to the processor. Control pin CA2 will remain high during this time period. After the data transfer is completed, the processor will force control line CA2 low again to indicate that the MPU is ready for the next batch of information. As you can see, the handshake is nothing more than messages sent back and forth between the devices in the forms of highs and lows, which indicate when to transmit data and then to acknowledge the receipt of the data. Control pins CB1 and CB2 are used in the handshake process for the peripheral device attached to inputs PB0 through PB7. Even though the PIA, or Peripheral Interface Adapter Device, is capable of both serial and parallel functions, it is usually thought of as being purely parallel. The 6821 is a Peripheral Interface Adapter, or PIA for short. It is constructed using NMOS technology. The microprocessor can read data from, or write data to, the 6821 through the data bus lines D0 through D7. The 6821 also has two peripheral ports. Port A uses pins PA0 through PA7, and Port B uses pins PB0 through PB7. This IC may be addressed through three chip select pins, CS0, CS1, and CS2. The inputs and outputs of this device are typically held at a high impedance state. Only when the chip is addressed and a high is placed on the enable input pin does the CPU actually see this device. The peripherals connected to the 6821 are accessed by the microprocessor through a procedure referred to as a handshake. The handshake is nothing more than a series of control pulses being exchanged between the peripheral devices and the CPU. These pulses are used to indicate when to transmit the data and then to acknowledge the receipt of the data. This concludes review number three. Next, we will examine a typical serial input-output device. Parallel ports are much faster and therefore more efficient than serial ports due to the fact eight bits or more of information may be transmitted at one time. However, there are situations in which the cost of transferring information in parallel becomes a deciding factor. For example, if you were using a phone modem to communicate with another PC user, a parallel modem would require a minimum of eight separate phone lines to transfer just the data. More lines would be required for the control signals. As you can see, this would become a very costly form of communication. In contrast, a serial communications link requires only one line to transfer the same information. As was mentioned earlier, the serial ports are slower than parallel ports, simply because the data can only be transmitted one bit at a time. Another difference is the bit length of the transmitted data will be longer with the serial device due to the fact certain format bits, like the start bit, parity bit, and stop bits must be added to the data. These format bits are used to control the device for read and write operations. The 6821 is a peripheral interface adapter, or PIA for short. It is constructed using NMOS technology. The microprocessor can read data from, or write data to, the 6821 through the data bus lines D0 through D7. The 6821 also has two peripheral ports. Port A uses pins PA0 through PA7, and Port B uses pins PB0 through PB7. This IC may be addressed through three chip select pins, CS0, CS1, and CS2. The inputs and outputs of this device are typically held at a high impedance state. Only when the chip is addressed and a high is placed on the enable input pin does the CPU actually see this device. The peripherals connected to the 6821 are accessed by the microprocessor through a procedure referred to as a handshake. The handshake is nothing more than a series of control pulses being exchanged between the peripheral devices and the CPU.
These pulses are used to indicate when to transmit the data and then to acknowledge the receipt of the data. This concludes review number three. Next, we will examine a typical serial input-output device. Parallel ports are much faster and therefore more efficient than serial ports due to the fact 8 bits or more of information may be transmitted at one time. However, there are situations in which the cost of transferring information in parallel becomes a deciding factor. For example, if you were using a phone modem to communicate with another PC user, a parallel modem would require a minimum of 8 separate phone lines to transfer just the data. More lines would be required for the control signal. As you can see, this would become a very costly form of communication. In contrast, a serial communications link requires only one line to transfer the same information. As was mentioned earlier, the serial ports are slower than parallel ports simply because the data can only be transmitted one bit at a time. Another difference is the bit length of the transmitted data will be longer with the serial device due to the fact certain format bits, like the start bit, parity bit, and stop bits must be added to the data. These format bits are used to control the device for read and write operations.